it started out by our constructing a St. Joseph altar that was in the works, at least in, in the plans. And we had been hoping to, ha to have this altar dedicated to St. Joseph as the completion of our Abbey Church that was uh, constructed and completed and dedicated in 2018 during Sister Romina's lifetime. And so it's the custom in many places to have the foundress of a community to be buried in the mother house chapel. So we thought it would be fitting to assume her and bring her to the altar of St. Joseph, which was originally going to be behind the high altar. Well, we, we called various people. We called a priest from the Diocese of Newark, the Archdiocese of Newark, who said, you know, he works in uh, a cemetery and that at this point we should expect only bones when we exhume her but he, he said as far as reinterring sister wilhelmina that we really need to just see what we had now father knew sister wilhelmina so he was somewhat hoping that we might find an incorruptible but you know this is the kind of thing you don't even dare to hope for but on the other hand when sister wilhelmina did pass away and she was lying in state she became more and more beautiful the more time went by uh, so that by the time we actually closed the coffin over, uh, we closed the coffin lid, she she was actually smiling beautifully, which she, you know, was it was a smile that was gradually growing the more she was um, being, the more people were paying their respects to her. So that was kind of our first inkling that something special was happening because there didn't seem to be any sort of decomposition taking place just while, she, while we were keeping vigils. So at any rate, we, we started digging uh, on the Feast of Our Lady of Good Council, April 26th, and it took us two days to redig the grave. It took longer to redig it than to dig it the first time because we had to be much more careful getting around the coffin. So when we discovered the coffin, we were surprised to see that it was uh, very much intact. In fact, the coffin had swerved just ever so slightly to avoid the pouring of the concrete pudding, which would have really destroyed the, the coffin if it were just a few inches tilted in one direction. So the sisters very carefully dug the dirt around the coffin and we hoisted it up and Mother Abbas said to, to all the, for all the sisters to, to kind of go to one side, uh, you know, because we wanted to be respectful of Sister Romina's remains. And so as we began to clear away the dirt, we saw there's a very, very large crack all the way down the coffin. And it seemed like the the crack was widest uh, right around the area of her face. So that was that was something we were uh, a bit sad about because we thought, okay, maybe maybe it's it's worse than we thought. But uh, we were, as we were trying to clear away the dirt, I said to Mother, I was maybe maybe try looking at the feet first. So she took she took a flashlight and she shone the the, the flashlight into the crack, and she screamed. I have never heard her scream like that. I don't think I ever will. She screamed at the top of her lungs and said, I see a foot. And so she handed me the flashlight and I looked in and sure enough, there was a foot just as full and beautiful as the day we buried her. You could even see the brand name of the sock you could see Haynes written on the, <laughs> on the socked foot. And so uh, when we actually did exhume her and we, we unscrewed the coffin lid, uh, at first we were, we were hesitant. We weren't sure if she was incorrupt or not because a, a great deal of mold had covered her face. But we could see those feet very clearly. In fact, sisters were going up and kind of pinching her toe, and it just felt like a real live toe. It was squishy. And and then uh, as as we were, you know, clearing away more, we said, oh, we, you know, we'll, we'll have to see what's under the mold. And Mother Abba said, well, mold doesn't grow on bone. Mold grows on living substance, so there must be something under there. <laughs> so this is something I think we were a little bit, um, having read Joan Carol Cruz's uh, book The Incorruptibles, which was a tremendous help for us, by the way, because there there aren't really any books out there about incorruptibles. So it was a great help to us to have these historical references of incorruptibles. And so uh, it took about two weeks to clean Sister Romina. We you have you have the impression that you just bring them up and they're it's like Sleeping Beauty, everything's completely intact. But but there are other uh, you know damages that are done uh, in in the grave, especially the the mold layer the mold layer. Uh, but it wasn't until we brought her back to the convent with the coffin lid open, we were singing and processing as we went, that we realized everything else in the coffin was gone. So we had we had poster board, we had tape, we had 
a, a satin lining all the way around the, the coffin. All of that was completely gone, completely disintegrated. And yet everything touching her was intact. Now I shouldn't say everything because um, things like the, the crown of flowers that was on her head was dried in place. Her habit was completely perfect. There was not even a thread out of place. In fact, we lifted her kapula and you could still see the threads hanging down that we, from the day we had cut it to, to fit it around her in the coffin. And it was, it was that much intact, not a thread out of place. And there were three diff different kinds of material. We have the synthetic, we have the cotton, and then we have the wool. All of them were completely intact. Whereas the synthetic, the satin lining was completely gone. So you would have her veil and then right next to it was the satin. There's nothing left of the satin, but her, her very thin material of the, her veil was, was perfect. I mean, ours, ours are in worse shape than hers was. <laughs> and it had been in the grave for four, four years at that point without a single thread disrupted. And so, uh, but it's interesting because the, we, we had tied a linen band around her, her jaw to keep, to keep the mouth closed. And that had actually started to disintegrate, which we thought was interesting because it was almost like the signs of her death were gone. So the coffin lining and that, that, that new linen piece of cloth that was right next to her velour. So we, or velour is like our, our wimple. So the new linen was rotting, but the used wimple was perfect. So, so even things like that, we said, it's, it's so beautiful that, that what she had in life, what spoke of her life in Christ was all intact. Whereas those, those elements of death were gone. And so that I think is one of the most beautiful things about finding Sulmia's in our body is that what speaks to us of Christ and our life in Christ and the resurrection and her belonging to Christ, all of that is still present even down to the very gossamer thin ribbon that was going around her profession candle, completely intact. And so we were, we were absolutely thrilled. <laughs> we were so, we were so happy, especially was as they cleared away the mold and you could just see her face. And she, she had just a little bit of a, a tooth showing just a little bit in a smile, almost like an, I told you so expression. So it was really, really beautiful. First of all, to see her again, but then to see this beautiful sign of our belief in the resurrection of the dead, that we had someone who resisted all of the effects of the fall with regard to death, so as to speak to us of the life that is to come. And that was her whole life. It was speaking of the life that is to come. And now we have that, I don't want to say living example, because of course she's gone to her reward, but we have, we have the sign of her life with us to remind us of the life that is to come. Father Carney, I want to get your impression of that, but but first, I, I I have to follow up with you, sister. What sort of impact did that have at the time, and has that had on your fellow sisters uh, uh, your, at the at the Abbey? Oh, it's it's been beautiful. Well, first of all, it's such a rare blessing, and I think we didn't realize that until after it happened. That there's, I heard there's only 200 recognized incorruptibles in the Catholic Church, and that's an extremely small number. Uh, but just to have our own among them now is really, I think, such a beautiful thing. And it's something Mother Abba said she wanted to put up a sign in our church for us, just saying, "Sisters, don't forget, we get to pray the Divine Office each day to to sing the praises of God in the same church as an as an incorruptible who is our foundress." And I think that's something as, as crowds come in and they see Sister Wilmina lying there in her full habit. And we kept her in that same habit. That's something I don't think everyone realizes when they come to see her, when they come to venerate her. These are, these are the clothes that we found her in. These were, these are her incorrupt uh, habit uh, pieces that, that she's, she's still displayed in that perfect habit. And so going there and praying the divine office with everyone who comes, they can see that here's Sister Wilhelmina, this is our foundress, and she's left us this legacy in this prayer that we continue day and night in, in the church. And then, God willing, we'll move from this life of prayer to the life of glory that she has and that she represents to us. And, and you see it even in the faces of people who come. They, they look at us, and they look at her, and they look at her, and they look at us, and you think this is exactly the way it should be, that our life would be tending toward heaven 
and be a sign of heaven, just as Sister Wilhelmina is. Only we're still left on this earth, and she's she's already gone to her reward, and God willing, she's pulling us behind her. So that's that's wow. what I think is that's what goes through our minds when we see her, and and just to have her back in the church again is such a, a great blessing for all of us.